Hello world, Liu here, and today we'll be talking about 6 cool things that I never knew about Python for loops and while loops until recently. Firstly, we have for else and while else loops. So for i in range 5, and let's just print i, and else print else block runs cause break didn't happen. So let's run this. And here we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And else block runs cause break didn't happen. So you might be wondering, how does an else block make sense in a for loop? So what happens is that if the break keyword does not execute inside here, the else block will actually run. However, if the break keyword executes within this for loop, the else block will not run. So let's try this. So if i is equals to 4 and i break. So if I run this, nothing will happen and this will not print. So once again, if break happens, else does not run. But if break does not happen, else will run. So this works the same way for while loops. i equals to 0 while i is less than 3, i plus equals to 1. And here we have else. And similarly, we print else block runs cause break didn't happen. So here, let's run our code. And this prints else block runs cause break didn't happen. So similarly, if we make break happen somewhere inside our while loop, else will not run. So if i is equals to 2 and i break. So let's run this again. And right now, this does not print. So here, if break happens inside the loop, else will not run. But if break does not happen, else will run. Number two, break versus continue. So here, both break and continue are keywords that we can put in the middle of our loops. However, break will stop the entire loop, while continue does not stop the entire loop. But instead, continue will skip the current iteration and move on directly to the next iteration. So let's use an example to illustrate this. So let's say fruits is equals to apple, orange, pear, pineapple, and durian. And for fruit in fruits, if fruit is equals to pear, I break. And here, I print fruit. So let's run this. And here, notice we only print apple and orange. So what's happening is fruit goes to apple. And since apple is not equal to pear, nothing will happen. And we print fruit. And next, fruit is equals to orange. And since orange is not equal to pear, break does not happen. And we print orange too. And that's why apple and orange are here. However, here in the third iteration, fruit is equals to pear. And now this is true and break happens. So when break happens, the entire loop will just stop. And that's why we don't even print pear. However, let's say we replace this with continue. And now let's run the code. And here we have apple, orange, pineapple, and durian. So once again, continue does not stop the entire loop, but instead it just skips to the next iteration. So what's happening here is fruit is equal to apple, and we are just going to print apple. Fruit is equal to orange, and we're just going to print orange. However, when fruit is equal to pear, what happens is that continue is executed. And because continue is executed, we move directly to the next iteration, which is fruit is equals to pineapple. So the print fruit statement for fruit is equals to pear is actually skipped. And after pineapple, we move on to durian as per normal. Number three, enumerate and zip. So both enumerate and zip are built-in functions that allow us to change up the way we iterate through stuff. So let's first talk about enumerate. So let's say I have a list of fruits, apple, orange, pear. And next, I'm going to iterate through this using enumerate. So for i fruit in enumerate fruits. So the list fruits goes into the brackets of enumerate colon. And let's print i comma fruit. So what enumerate does is that it allows us to loop through both the index and the fruit at the same time. So let's run this and we'll get 0 apple, 1 orange, and 2 pear. So notice that apple is at index 0, orange is at index 1, and pear is at index 2. 
and because of enumerate, we are able to get the indexes and the elements at the same time. Next, let's talk about the zip function. So I'm going to add the prices is equals to 456 for fruit price in zip fruits prices between fruit and price. So what the zip function does is that it allows us to iterate through two or more things at once. So here we have fruits and prices and we want to iterate like this apple 4, orange 5 and pear 6. So we can do it like that and if we run this code we will get apple 4, orange 5 and pear 6. So one thing to note is that if I add an additional fruit here and if I run this again nothing will change because the iteration stops when one of the lists inside zip has reached its limit. Also, another thing to note is that we can iterate through three or more things at the same time too. So fruits, prices, and let's say letters is equals to ABC. So fruit, price, letter, and let's pass letters here too. And let's put letter here too. And so if we run this, we will get this output. Apple 4A, orange 5B, and pair 6C. Number four, we have tuple unpacking during iteration. So let's say I have a list of tuples, one, two, three, four, five, six. So if I iterate through this normally, I will get each tuple in my list. So print element. So I'm gonna get a tuple containing one, two, a tuple containing three, four, and a tuple containing five, six. However, if I want to assess the numbers inside the tuple directly, I can simply do this. So for a comma b in my list, and then I print a comma b. And once again, if I run this, I will get 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, 6. So let's say we add a 100 here, and let's say we add a 200, and let's say we add a 300 here. So now there are three numbers, so we can do this. We add a c here and we add a C below 2. And if we run this, we will get 1, 2, 100, 3, 4, 200, and 5, 6, 300. So how you unpack your tuple will depend on how your tuples are structured inside your list. However, one thing to note is that all of the tuples must be the same shape for you to be able to do this. So let's say if I add a 400 here, and if I try to run this, I will get an error too many values to unpack for my tuple unpacking. Another thing to note is that if you have a nested tuple like this, you can unpack them in the same way too. So A, comma, open bracket, BC. And if we run this, we will get the same output. Number five, ether tools. So iter tools contain quite a few useful functions that we can use to iterate through stuff. And also, iter tools is part of the Python standard library, which means that we do not need to keep install this, and we can simply import iter tools. So here are just some useful iter tools functions that we can use. So let's say we have fruits equals to apple, orange, pear, pineapple, durian. So for a comma b in iter tools pear wise, and let's put in fruits here, and we print a comma b. And if we run this, we'll get apple orange. And in the next iteration, we will get orange pear. And in the third iteration, we'll get pear pineapple. And in the fourth iteration, we'll get pineapple durian. So another cool iter tools tool is cycle. So let's say I want to generate apple, orange, apple, orange, apple, orange, and so on until I do something else to break the loop. So I can do this using iter tools dot cycle. So for a in iter tools dot cycle, and inside cycle we pass in our apple and orange. So here let's print a. So this will be an infinite loop. So let me add a time dot sleep to make it clearer. So for time, so here time dot sleep. So our program will just do nothing for zero point five seconds. So if I run this. Apple, orange, apple, orange, apple, orange, and so on. And this goes on forever and ever until we break the loop. So there are actually many more cool functions inside the iter tools library, as we can see here. 
but I won't cover all of them. And do feel free to look it up in your own time. Number six, converting nested loops into list comprehension. So before we jump into the comprehension part, let's first define fruits is equals to apple, orange, and pear. And let's say numbers is equals to four and five. And let's say we want to do this for fruit in fruits. And inside here, we have a nested for loop for number in numbers. And out, append, f string. So let's just add the fruit and number together. So fruit dash and number. So let's print out. And here, if we print this, we will get apple 4, apple 5, orange 4, orange 5, pear 4, and pear 5. So here, we can actually convert this nested for loop into a list comprehension. So let's say x is equals to, and let's put the square brackets first. So how we can do this is, we take the outer loop and we put it inside first. And next, we take the inner loop and then we copy it after the outer loop. And afterwards, we take this element and we put it at the front of the comprehension. So let's print x. And here we have it, the exact same thing as out. So this is useful if you need to convert your nested loops into list comprehension. And this works for nested loops with more than two loops too. So thanks for watching and hopefully you have learned at least one new thing about Python loops today. See you in the next one.